hi guys welcome back to the channel I'm glad that you're watching in today's video I'm going to share a little um, personal story of um, how I got a fully funded trip to Oslo in Norway so many of you have been asking me like how do you afford to travel all the time how do you um, afford the money how do you afford the time and um, I try to answer that question in this video up here check on the link but um, today I want to go a little step further and just share my experience of winning an actual um, fully paid for trip um, to an international destination and just for the record at the time I won this um, competition I had only 500 Instagram followers. No, actually I think there were 480 something um, so but by the time I actually left for Norway I had about 500 Instagram followers and that's what I'm going to talk about so my journey began somewhere um, in December I think of 2018 when I received um, the confirmation that I had been selected um, for a fully funded trip to Norway um, Norway has always been on my, my bucket list so I decided to have Norway as one of my must, visit, must visit destinations for that year um, unfortunately as the year progressed um, the unfortunate happened I lost my job and so while I was a little happy because um, finally I could be free to travel without um, time limitations I was a little worried if I should still visit Norway which is not a very cheap destination so I did the expected I dropped Norway out of my um, bucket list um, so usually when I identify a location that I would like to visit which I usually do sometime in December I map out all locations I would like to visit in the following year the first thing that I do is to start following the tourism boards of these um, destinations and then I also look for a few bloggers here and there. Usually I look for bloggers that I can identify with who have been to those destinations and I also check out where they went, what they did or if I notice that a blogger is planning to visit um, that, des that destination, I also follow them. So naturally, since I had um, Norway on my bucket list for that year, I started following the Visit um, Oslo Instagram page, right? Among other um, Visit Norway ded dedicated websites. So one day, as fate would have it, I was crawling through Visit Oslo Instagram's page and a photo caught my eye. Only Planet had just voted Oslo as one of the must visit cities in 2018. And to celebrate, visit Oslo, that is the tourism um, management site for um, the city of Oslo, would be flying in 10 people from all over the world to show them what Oslo has to offer during winter. So basically, They'll be flying in 10 people from all around the world and they'll give you your round top your round trip air ticket to be taken care of your food and all the activities that you are going to engage in and all you had to do was to either um and all you had to do was to use the hashtag visit oslo 2018 either in a tweet or an instagram post to enter the competition so by the way i usually compile a whole list of competitions that are offered to contestants worldwide and you can check on the link above for the latest roundup of competitions that you don't miss out so anyway um so all you had to do was to use the hashtag visit also 2018 either on a twitter post or an instagram post and i was a little skeptical at the beginning and just thought that this was a hoax but what i did i was on their page I commented using the hashtag visit Oslo 2018 on the Instagram post so I was like what do I have to lose it just so I just went in to that comment and I'm like hashtag visit Oslo 2018 a few days later uh, one guy from visit Oslo his name was Todd I think and he's the one who was in charge of visit Oslo social medias page 
DM'd me via Instagram. So he wanted to talk to me a bit more about the possibility of visiting Oslo and he then asked me to send an email to Facebook at visitoslo.com. So just the fact that there was um, an email address with the destination address visitoslo.com kind of started to take my um, fears away like this thing is actually real. So in response to my email, Todd gave me like um, a background of what the event would entail and what would be expected of participants. He then, he then asked me to tell the Visit Oslo team in a few words about myself and where I would like to join the Visit Oslo um, adventure. So what I did, I was still a little skeptical at this point, but I decided to just send an email anyway. So I responded back to them and if you want to see the email that I sent to them, tell me in the comments below and I'll share it with you. So over the next few weeks, we communicated back and forth via email until sometime in um, December when Todd told me that I had been selected as a participant. I was still a little skeptical and I promised myself not to share this news with anyone until I actually got my air ticket. So after a few days, um, the Visit Oslo team contacted me again and asked me what um, airport I would like to fly from. And um, so the competition was only for two days. So you know the competition, the trip was only for two days in Oslo. And then he also asked me in case I would like to extend my trip at my own cost. So I should tell him what dates I would like to either come earlier or to stay later. <laughs> Eva being Eva, I decided to extend my trip for a further two weeks. So they sent me a ticket on KLM. It was um, flying out of Nairobi, um, I think in February 12th. And then I came back on February 26th. So I decided to visit some other parts of Norway and then I visited other um, surrounding countries. So when I actually got my airline ticket, I was like, this thing is actually happening. I'll be going to Norway. So I started shopping for winter gear in Nairobi. That's a story for another day. I'll shoot another, an entire video about my experience. And um, sometime um, just before the end of December, Todd again sent me an itinerary and asked me to confirm if I was still interested in visiting. And I'm like, hell yes, I am still interested. So on 2nd of January, I got, 2nd of January last year, I got the best, best, best New Year gift. I got an Nairobi Oslo return ticket fully paid for by Visit Oslo team. Thank you very much. And free accommodation at the Radisson Blue Hotel. Again, I have shot an entire video. You can check the link up here of my experience in Radisson Blue. And we had so much fun. I also have an entire video. Check the link up here of um, what we did there and how everything went. Anyway, these are the main takeaways I took out from this experience and I think this is the most important part of this video. So I'm gonna pause for a bit, you can take a paper and pen and just take this that could work for you, not just for travel related um, stuff, but even just in your general life. So the main takeaway I took from this experience, takeaway number one is that luck is equal to opportunity meeting preparedness. You most probably have heard that um, um, what do they call? quote several times, but I personally experience it. So in spite of the unexpected way in which um, this entire event played itself, the many different building blocks that I had put along the way definitely contributed to my quote-unquote luck. So for instance, if it wasn't for my regular activity on social media and my deliberate decision to read every single post of all accounts that I follow on Instagram, I definitely would have missed the Visit Oslo call for interested participants. So that's one thing that I do. I follow very few accounts depending on where I am at in my travel planning and I make sure to check out every post that they post 
I scroll down and read the entire post. So I don't just click like and move on. I like it and then I read the captions. So it may seem like a lot of work, but that's what social media is for. And you just never know. So like, especially in these big accounts, you might think like they don't even notice your comments, they don't notice your likes. But if you love it, you just keep doing I, I So um, you never know when opportunity will cross paths with all the groundwork you made like in my instance. So, and this doesn't have to apply for an all expense paid for trade, but it could be for anything in life, any life situation you find yourself in. If you decide you're doing it, just go all the way. Don't do things like half-baked. So like in this case, I've decided to be on social media for a purpose. And I usually say, if you're not learning, making money, or networking, you're doing social media wrong. So personally, I have chosen to be on social media to learn and to make money. So I may as well just go all the way. So number one takeaway, luck equals to opportunity meeting preparedness. So do all the groundwork like you do and the universe will one day pay you off. Number two, don't be afraid to invest in your passion. So it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort and sometimes even money to make it to the point where you start getting the free stuff. So especially if you have plans to make money from you know the travel industry, whether it's in blogging or whether it's Instagram account, whether it's YouTube, wherever it is, do not be afraid to invest the time and the resources that is necessary. So one common um, feature I noticed among all the other nine participants who accompanied myself on the visit also trip is that they were all um, have a passion for travel and they were already doing their own personal self-funded travel before this um, event. So I am almost certain that this is one of the factors that um, um, was taken into consideration in selecting participants and we both know that travel is not cheap whether you're talking about time or resources and especially at the outset and you're just beginning but it is worth investing in it if it's your passion to travel invest in it and whatever other um, passions you may have out there invest in them don't be afraid sometimes it doesn't have to be money but it can be time it will pay off one day Number three takeaway that I got from this trip is that it always pay to be prepared. So for instance, instance in my case, I always make sure that um, since I travel on a Kenyan passport and we can only visit um, 68 of the 193 UN recognized countries, either visa free or with a visa on arrival, I always make sure that I have a Schengen visa <laughs> valid multiple entry a US visa valid multiple entry, a Canadian visa valid multiple entry, and a UK visa valid multiple entry. And um, this I make sure that I have at any point in time in my travels. So although this is definitely a very costly exercise, getting visas is not cheap, but what I have learned is the more visas you get, the easier it is for you to get um, longer term visas and get your visas approved so for instance in my case the vast the first schengen visa application that i did was given for like i think two weeks but right now i have a two-year schengen visa multiple entry and i have shot an entire video of how to um, increase chances of your visa being approved so check out this link up here i will show you how to increase chances of your long-term entry schengen visa um, getting approved so as a sidebar, um, I made sure to mention in my correspondence with the Visit Oslo 2018 team when they asked me to say something about myself and why I would like to enter this competition, I made sure to mention that I have all my paperwork ready, I have my visa situation taken care of, and I am almost certain that this added maybe like a quarter mark to my application. So number four takeaway is it takes a dash of passion and a whole lot of guts to accomplish your dreams, right? So I was very skeptical of this process at the very beginning. I was like, so when Todd told me that I've been selected for this, um, um, this opportunity, I was like, 
who wants to send a Kenyan girl with just 500 followers on a fully paid for trip, you know? Like, are you kidding me? But it took like a huge leap of faith on my part to even keep the correspondence going to send in the information that they asked me. So at some point when Todd asked me to send my passport details to enable them book the air tickets, I almost chickened out, you know, like, what if this is some um, online hoax, but I'm glad that I trusted him in the process. And Norway had always been a bucket list destination for me. So I decided to give it a try anyway. And after all, I was like, the worst that could have happened is to have my dreams shattered. Like that's the worst that could have happened. So um, takeaway number six is invest in social media. So I have a theory that the internet is the new resume or CV, if that's the word that you use. So it therefore makes a lot of sense to leverage the various online tools that are available and share with the world what you stand for and what you're good at. So the same way you do your CV on LinkedIn and you have like a paper resume, I think it makes a lot of sense to also show the world what you're all about. If it's YouTube, if it's Instagram, if it's Twitter, tell the world who you are, who is Eva, who is, what is she passionate about, what is she doing? And you can select what parts of your life you want to show off and you don't have to show off everything. If that is what works for you, go for it. But I would suggest that be careful because the internet never forgets. So make sure whatever you put out there in the universe is something that you're ready to stand for five years from today. And don't be so selfish and focus only on posting your content or just everything being about me, 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 or just passively scrolling, scrolling through other people's, whether it's Instagram pages or YouTube videos, you're just clicking without reading. If it's Facebook, just scrolling through feeds, interact with those that you admire, comment, ask questions, and you never know when somebody will respond or when something will work in your favor. And after all, that's why it's called social. So be social. Don't just be there just smiling, like ask questions, comment, read through captions, you never know. And this goes beyond just liking posts, yeah? If let's say you're on Instagram, don't just spend all your time, I don't know, two hours liking posts. You can like, and by the way, I don't know if you've heard about this, but Instagram is actually, um, on the process of facing out the like button. So if that's how you spend your time interacting on social media, maybe it's time to start learning how to use the comment button and the read button so that you just like read through captions. And the people that you follow or you comment on their posts may not respond to you today, but it helps to keep you on their radar. So I'll give you a practical example. In my, I have about I think 4,800 followers on Instagram as at the shooting of this post. But there are two fans, <laughs> there are fans or followers, what I should call them. I won't say their names, but they know themselves. Like, so there's one who's anonymous, but comments on every single post of mine on Instagram always and he gives the most like the most what can i say the most flattering <laughs> comments every time i feel i'm having a bad day if i just go to my instagram page there'll be something oh you're gorgeous you look beautiful whatever and he is always on my i don't know it's a he or a she is on my radar and if the universe conspires one day and let's say i'm looking for my favorite fan like i know those two accounts i won't even have to think so Sometimes, personally, I respond to every comment either on my YouTube or social media channel, but not everyone does that. But it keeps people on there. It keeps you on people's radar. And it may not pay today or tomorrow, but you never know what doors it could open for you, okay? Or what opportunities it could bring you away. So I just give the classic example because I already read every caption to every picture that I 
this that catches my eye on social media that's how i learned about this competition if i was just scrolling through i may never have seen this um, opportunity number seven takeaway when in doubt conduct your due diligence and then act yeah so instead of okay i'm so skeptical and then you keep quiet no go one step further and do some due diligence so again i've already mentioned this before it took a huge leap of faith uh, for me to get through the visit oslo 2018 application process so for instance the moment the visit oslo team um, started communications i immediately reached out to google and was able to confirm facts that, for example, like Lonely Planet having selected Visit Oslo as a must visit destination in 2018. And I was also able to do um, a quick confirmation on Todd, who manages a social media channel, and Didrik, and know that they were real people. I saw their pictures. And also, when I received my ticket, I quickly used the reservation um, number and my surname to confirm that it was valid on the KLM website. So again, just do your due diligence because you might lose out just because of being in doubt. So I always say when in doubt, do your due diligence and then act, right? Takeaway number eight, which is again my biggest, biggest takeaway in all this experience is do epic stuff, yeah? So I don't know how better to describe the word epic, but epic is basically the opposite of boring. Yeah. So I'm not sure what happens to most of us when we grow much older. So like in my case, I am 40 plus, but somehow along the way, we forget how to be fun and how to engage in fun activities that we used to do when we were little kids. And how to lead like a full healthy and happy lifestyle we kind of put that in the back burner i think it's because of the many worries in life that we stumble upon but i believe that you can still do epic stuff however old or young you are and it doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg sometimes it costs zero shillings to be epic and if let's say you want to do travel related stuff it doesn't have to be um you know things that are just out of your what can i say it doesn't have to be like you have to go across oceans for example so epic is still happy sorry epic is still epic if it is happening even in your backyard you can actually so let's say if you're best in nairobi like myself you can actually take a bus or connect different trains and find your way all the way in Victoria Falls and have a great time. Like you don't have to catch the flight that costs I think about 700 US dollars to fly to Victoria Falls from Nairobi. You can actually catch a bus and find your way there or take a train and you'll be there like I think in three days. Or if let's say you have visiting all the seven wonders of the world in your bucket list, you don't have to go to Petra in Jordan or it's not a mass that you have to go to Machu Picchu in Peru. You can actually just um, take a matatu, if let's say you live in Nairobi, take a matatu or hire a car or book a tour, two days, three days in Masai Mara. Witness the world beast migration anytime between June and September and voila, you just knocked off <laughs> one bucket list item document it and share it with the rest of us okay well that's it for today um in terms of my experience for winning a fully paid for trip to norway and um i don't know about you but have you ever won a travel competition or any competition for that matter what was your experience like what um lessons did you learn from it how did you what factors do you think played into you winning your competition so as usual, our conversations continue in the comments below. So let us know how your experience was. And um, thank you for staying up to the end of this video. If you liked it, remember to hit the like button. And um, if you haven't subscribed, remember to subscribe and also hit the notification bell so that every time I shoot a new video, you'll be the first one to know and you don't have to miss out on new videos. So that's it for today and bye-bye. Um, See you in the next video.